In this A3 tutorial, we're going to look at triplet harmonics and, and we're going to look at why they're, they're such an issue. Now, the first thing is, what is a triplet harmonic? A triplet harmonic is the odd harmonic that's a multiple of three. So we're looking at the third, the ninth, and the fifteenth harmonics. Now, the question is, in a three-phase power system, why are these particular harmonics a, an issue? And I'm going to go through and I'm going to hopefully provide you with an explanation that avoids the mathematics but is graphical and visual. And to do that, I'm going to look at the third because it's a little bit easier to look at. If we look at a three-phase system in the time domain, we have our first waveform here, which we're going to call phase A, like we've been doing. And we have phase B and phase C. Now, a harmonic is a multiple of our fundamental. So, for example, if our fundamental was F1, we call that our fundamental, if that was 50 Hz, our third harmonic would be three times that, would be 150 Hz. We know that the cycle, the length of time an entire waveform takes is 1 over the frequency, so for 20 Hz, uh, for 50 Hz, that gives us a period of 20 milliseconds. Our period is going to be a third of that for that, which will be in the order of six point six milliseconds. If we look at phase A here, we can draw our third harmonic in here quite simply. And in order to do that, we need to get three cycles in the space of one. So we can do that by going like this. So here is the fundamental of phase one and this waveform here is the third harmonic. There are three cycles, one, two, three within the cycle of our fundamental. Now we're not going to worry about the amplitude, I'm just drawing these to whatever because it, it makes life a little bit easier to do the visual description. So we're not going to put any numbers on the y-axis. They might be bigger, they might be smaller, it doesn't matter. Now, we've established that this here is the third harmonic in time for phase A. We can do the same for phase B. We'll say, well, what would be the third harmonic for phase B? We find the zero crossing of phase B, which is here, and we start to do the same. And lo and behold, it's over exactly the same point in time. Again, if the amplitudes are a bit different, the amplitude will be a bit different. But, so we have also the third harmonic for the B phase. We go to the C phase, we start here, it's exactly the same. In the time domain, it occurs in exactly the time thing. So, if we reflect back on what we've talked earlier in a star system, for example, which we can draw like this, Phase A is our neutral wire, we'll call that phase B and we'll call that phase C. We know that the sum here of all of these voltages coming in from A, from B, from C, the sum of, well if we draw it say here, and this particular point in time here, 
the magnitude of phase B plus the magnitude of phase A plus the magnitude of phase C, at that point there, the sum of the voltages of our fundamental all equals zero. And so therefore, at this point here, where we've got all these, volt all these coming in like this, at this point here, the sum of our fundamental voltages all equals zero if our system is perfectly balanced. However, if we look at this particular point in time here for our third harmonic, we can see that the sum of the third harmonic from phase A and the third harmonic from phase B and the third harmonic from phase C is not zero. We've got the sum of all of these harmonics is actually going to be three times this. So it's probably going to go up like this. The sum of our voltages of our third harmonics most certainly is not zero. So at this particular exact same point here, the sum of our third harmonic voltages is not zero. And we can see that in the time domain. That's what we've shown and what we've proved. Now this is a problem in a star system because the only way of maintaining this is to have these neutral, these triplin currents flowing out in the neutral wire, which means our neutral current is not zero. This is why triplins are a real problem in a star system. In a delta system, which we can draw as this, we have no return path to, shall we say, get rid of these triplets. I mean, they can't go down the neutral wire this way. So what do they do? They circulate. We end up with our triplet currents going around here. They circulate. Now why is this a problem in a delta system? In a delta system with these circulating currents, or any system, we know that the power that's dissipated in here is a function of the square of the current and the impedance of our circuit. Now these are all obviously impedances here. We've got a circulating current, it's not going anywhere. The end result is that all of our triplins are circulating We've got a circulating current times the impedance of our load, so therefore our power loss goes up, which means we have increased heating in our system, waste heat. This is why triplins are a problem in both star systems and delta systems. In star systems they cause neutral currents, in delta systems they circulate. To get rid of triplins, the most common way of getting rid of them is to use star delta transformers where we will have a transformer where the primary side will be star or delta and the secondary side will be whichever one the other one isn't. And so this is why this configuration here is used in almost all the transformers you'll encounter. In distributions transformers, this is used for our 11 kV, and this is our 230-400 transformer here. They use star delta transformers because these cancel the triplins, and why that works is a subject of another tutorial, but they cancel these triplins because triplins are a problem in star systems, and they're a problem in Delta systems. Thanks for watching.